glazing tip video because I want to talk about weighing the glaze as you apply it to the inside. But um, I'll just very quickly run through a mug as I'm glazing it. So first I wipe it with a cloth to get rid of any dust. Um, then I always check there's no sharp bits on the rim and handle because at this stage, bisquare, they're very easy to fix. If you fire a glaze and there is a sharp spot anywhere, um, you basically can't fix it. So, first main tip is the car dent puller. Got a full video on these, so I won't go into it too much, but um, helps if you get it slightly wet first and you need the base of your piece wax resisted, then stick it on, check it's got a decent grip, I'm doing the pebble glaze, so I'm putting uh, a contrast glaze on the outside. This is the white, the modified version of Heath ATV Ivory, which you can find on Glazy. Um, but you and I just blow, um, you get the drips that form up near the rim, so I just blow them so they're not single big drips, because if you have any uh, singular big blobs of glaze anywhere that's liable to crack around the edge of it as the glaze shrinks it's much easier much better to have a, a an even coat across the whole thing so uh, that's one thing you can do if you get the drips after you turn it over to get it off the dent puller I grip around the edge release the dent puller and then you've got your mug you can now take from the bottom and set aside and I will let it dry up for um, a couple of minutes while I glaze everything else um, before I do the inside glaze but before I do the inside glaze I'll talk about what the, the kind of the main tip of this video which is weighing your glaze um, and this is something I had the idea of ages ago and then just couldn't be bothered to do. Um, and I started doing it, which I think it was while I was doing the Ceramic Materials Workshop class, um, the advanced one. And I was working on floating blues. And this is going to have a floating blue on the inside. They are a particularly sensitive glaze um, to thickness. <sighs> So if you want to get um, the colour and the movement that you expect, it has to be applied at the thickness you'd expect. Um, and I was doing a bunch of tests, so I think I've fired something like 100, 200 test tiles. Um, and um, basically you can't learn anything from the test tiles unless they're consistent across applications. And if you're mixing up different recipes, they'll behave different ways. So different glaze ingredients kind of gel up and get thicker in the bucket at the same specific gravity. Um, if you're not familiar with the term specific gravity, it basically just means density relative to water. But with something like this, where you're diluting it with water, the specific gravity is basically how well packed all the glaze ingredients are and how much water you've added to it. So, um, obviously, glaze ingredients are rocks, essentially ground to dust. They are denser than water. So, generally, you're aiming for a specific gravity of 1.5-ish for glazes, 1.4, 1.5. What that means is it's 1.4 times the density of water so you know that there's more things added to the water. The more water you add, the closer to one the specific gravity gets. Um, very easy to calculate specific gravity. You just take a volume, easiest if you do 100 mil, and weigh it. And if it weighs 100 grams, it's got a specific gravity of one. If it weighs 150 grams, it's got a specific gravity of 1.5. Um, but the point is that different glazes behave differently. So in order to get a consistent comparison across all of them, um, you want to know how much glaze you're putting on your tile. And the 
hands down, quickest, easiest way to do it is just zero a set of scales on whatever you're applying the glaze to and um, apply the glaze and then see how much is on the test tile. And once I'd started doing that for those, it really became a bit of a no-brainer to do it for particularly the pieces like this where they're quite sensitive to application. But it means you can check consistency across time as well with other glazes and other applications. Um, so I will, every now and then, I will just weigh a piece as I apply the glaze to it. Um, both one of my other glazes which isn't quite so fussy about it. And it means that you can check you can do a control piece where you weigh your application to see what your application looks like, write down the number, and then just check, you know, six months time, if you're hitting those numbers with a glaze that's diluted by the same amount, which is part of the, the relevant thing. Um, but when you know your variables for your glazes, you can very easily have consistency over applications and over time. Interestingly, with the um, capacity measurements, you'll find that um, they don't scale with, the, the amount you need doesn't scale linearly with capacity. So as in, um, my small mugs are roughly half the size of my giant mugs and well in fact there is less than half the size of the giant mugs but the they need um, a little over half the amount of the glaze inside and you'll find that gets even more pronounced as things get significantly bigger it doesn't scale linearly and the reason for that is what's known as the cube square law um, but it's the idea that volume increases relative to surface area differently as you scale things up, depending on the, the specific shape. Um, but they don't scale together, which is why small animal you can't you couldn't just scale a small animal up to a big animal because things wouldn't work the same way for it. That's why same applies to these. Right, so this is how I do the inner glaze. This is the relevant part, really. Um, and I'm just using one of these really cheap uh, 500 grams by 0 0.01 gram scales. But there's these generally come in two um, formats. There's the 0 0.01 gram ones and the 0 0.1 gram ones, and they go up to three kilos. So I like having the two of them, this one's more precise, but with a lower limit. Uh, obviously that one goes a bit higher, and then my other scale is a 10 kilo kitchen scale. So for each one, you lose precision as you gain weight, and they're all about 10 pounds. So it's nice having one of each of them. They work really well. They're accurate enough, they're not really as accurate as an, uh, an expensive scale, but you can spend hundreds or thousands of pounds on a scale. If you want real precision, that one's good enough for pretty much everything. Certainly good enough for this. So that's what I'm using. Um, I will glaze a couple of different sizes so you get an idea of um, how much glaze I'm using for each size. Uh, this is with a floating blue so that I'm doing quite a thick application of these and you do need to know how much water you've added, at least approximately. So I start diluting my floating blues one to one glaze to water. So for a kilo of glaze mix, um, I will put a kilo of water in. Um, and then generally that is a bit on the thick side, so I will add a little bit more water as they thicken up. Um, but that's a nice starting point. Uh, you can measure specific gravity, as mentioned in the previous uh, little bit, 
um, which will again give you consistency um, but it's not the only thing that matters a lot of people get very hung up on specific gravity it's a useful measure but it's not the most important measure you want to know it's a, a trade-off between how the glaze is behaving so how um, essentially how thick it is how viscous because it's no good having the right specific gravity if it's not applying properly um, and uh, then how much your bisque wear is taking up which will be dependent on your clay and um, your bisque temperature so don't worry too much about specific gravity but it is a useful measure this is a small mug the fired capacity will be 250 mil thrown with 250 grams of clay I will put just under 20 grams of glaze into that and that's 20 grams total weight so um, including the water no, I'm sure slightly the nice thing is it doesn't matter if you're a gram or two out what you're really looking for is to not be um, wildly out with these obviously that is in part because this glaze is inherently quite variable so my application doesn't need to be perfectly even. What I like to get is evenness around the piece rather than constant across the whole thing because the idea is that I want it to flow down. Um, so what you saw me do there was pour in. I swirl round to get the bottom covered. I twist round to get up to the rim. Um, once I've gone round and back, I then swirl to cover the bottom again and then any remaining glaze, I just turn it like that to run it round and round in bands until it um, firms up and the reason for that is you don't want too much at the bottom because that will just that's where it's going to naturally want to pull and if it's too thick it will start to craze um, and that's pretty much across the board even if you've got a glaze that doesn't craze much uh, that fits your clay well if it goes on too thick it will it'll lean that way especially in something like a mug where it's going to have boiling water poured into it. So you want to avoid too thick an application at the bottom and that's very easily done. So what you do is you try and keep it on the walls of the piece where you'll get that movement over the pattern. That's what makes it a pebble in this case, but the pebble, peacock eye, nautilus, impulse, they all rely on the fact the glaze is flowing down the piece. So you want most of the glaze up around the rim. You don't from my experience, I would say with my application, you don't want too much in the overlap. You're better off having most of the floating blue just below the overlap because there's already the other glaze there. And once you get into too thick an application, you're at risk of crawling, which can be resolved um, by chipping off. When it starts to peel, you chip it off and reapply it, but it's best avoided. So try not to get too much on the overlap, just overlap slightly and then dump the rest of the glaze around. So that is on a small piece. And then we have, actually, I don't know what size this is. I think probably just a large, yeah. So large, thrown with 450 grams, capacity of 450 mil. So nearly double that, but I'm gonna put generally low 30 so I'm about 33 no not even that much 30 grams for these so 30 grams and basically you're looking at nearly twice the capacity half again as much glaze just because um, of the way it works so zero the scales and a little bit of good measure, swirl it around, roll it around at the top, and back again, and then even coating on the bottom, and anything that's left gets redistributed up the walls. And then it also works for this is a useful bowl. Throw them with 350 grams, you can treat them basically the same way as you would the mugs. 
So you're aiming for high 20s. wrist action but this is much easier if you're not trying to show it towards a camera um, so if you try this you'll see I'm making it look harder than it needs to be but um, you want to just kind of roll it around and that's it so I highly recommend if you've got a glaze that's variable you need consistency or you want to have consistency over time you don't have to do this with every single application, but I tend to for mugs because they're enough effort and you don't really want to uh, either direction, too much or too little, it's not great. So the amount of time you've put into the mug to get to this stage, this slows it down by a couple of seconds per application. It's a bit of a fine but it's worth it as far as I'm concerned for mugs so I do it for anything that I'm putting floating blue on that's a mug and generally I'll do it for bowls definitely if you're going to do a set which I am of these um, you can be consistent across the entire set by doing this again glaze application the same um, but really worthwhile and then test tiles test tiles are a huge one because so many times I see test tiles on glazy where they don't look like the glaze that they're replicating. So someone will upload a test tile for a glaze. Um, obviously I get notified when it's on mine, but I see it on other people's glazes as well. And you can immediately see the application is way too thin. Um, and it can be because people's test tiles are quite thin so they don't take up the glaze the same way a thicker piece would or it could just be that they're dipping in it it could be that they've made a 100 gram mix and they've diluted it too much but if you know how much of the dry glaze equivalent you're applying to a test tile then you have a really good idea um, how that glaze should behave um, and if in doubt when you're doing test tiles if the glaze isn't beading at the bottom I need particularly great examples because these aren't particularly doing it, although you can sort of see. Uh, let's see if I can get a focus on that. Um, that bead at the edge, that's what you're looking for. When the bottom of your test tile, and I'll, I intend to post the recipe for this at some point, this is a, a glacier with 2% tin in it, so it's picking up the purple from that because it's a, a chrome tin recipe focus but yeah you want that bead where it flows down if it's not getting thickness at the bottom it's a thin application once it starts to thicken at the base then you know you've put it on probably thick enough to get a good representation of what that glaze will do um, but the, all of that can be avoided by weighing your test tiles and so if you've got test tiles like this this sort of size um, then I would ruin the focus, sorry. I've not got this set on autofocus because then it jumps around too much. But um, the downside is that if I then fiddle with it, it's completely wrong. Yeah, if you've got test tiles this sort of size, um, I aim for upwards of three to four grams of glaze mix on a weight increase. So that would be the equivalent of say two one and a half to two grams of dry glaze mix on them um, and with that much glaze you know that it's gonna be behaving the way you want and by weighing them you know when you put them in the kiln that you're not going to be disappointed with the application when they come out you might be disappointed with the glaze but you're not going to be sat there looking at the test tile going I can't learn anything from this because the application was off so worth doing in my opinion uh, people should weigh uh, their glazes more because it's a great simple way to, to verify as you go what the amount of glaze on 
a piece is and that at the end of the day that's what you care about it's not dip time it's not even physical glaze thickness i know some people have very precise measuring tools that um, poke a spike through a layer of glaze to the clay piece to see what the physical distance of glaze is in kind of microns um, but back to how different ingredients will have different specific different properties at different specific gravities different ingredients will pack differently um, and so if you've ever used pretty sure mag carbs the worst but magnesium carbonate is so fluffy and um, wood ash if you've ever used kind of like um, I've got one of these tubs which would be five kilos of um, silica or something like that would be one kilo of wood ash so if you were doing it by volume that throws it completely off if you do it by weight which is chemically what you're interested in um, then you know you've got the right amount on there so um, this has turned into far longer video than I intended but um, but actually I, I don't think I'd waffle too much so hopefully there's going to be some usable information in there and if you've watched this far um, I hope it was worth it thank you